early, early, early on in my priesthood, probably the best criticism I ever received came from an elderly gentleman down in Dalton, Georgia. He said, son, you know, you got a problem there. You just don't gum things enough. Well, I might need to translate that for you. <laughs> in other words, I have the type of personality that I later came to understand is low context. If I see a problem, bam, jump on it, got it solved, let's move on. But there are high context persons in the world, and this gentleman was trying to remind me that high context people have a very important role to play. They stretch out the context of whatever the issue or problem is, and says, well, have you considered this? Have you considered that? Have you considered this? Which drives us low context people bang. But it's really important to get that total context. Now my low context person this week, reading this gospel lesson, got it, yep, it's the Eucharist. Breaking that bread, there's Jesus. Right there in the colic we heard, right there in the, yes, that's all it is. And then that high context person that I've become more acquainted with through my life steps in and says, well, yeah, that's the prevailing symbol in the story. Maybe there's something more. What do you mean something more? It's breaking the bread. Well, if it's as simple as breaking the bread, you could just grab a box of saltine crackers and walk through town cracking crackers and everybody would see Christ everywhere. No, oh, yeah. Maybe there is something more. Well, remember that story about the mouse and the frog. I said, oh yeah, maybe you ought to go dig that up and read it. So I did. And here's that story. It's from Jalaladeen Ruby Smith now. A mouse and a frog meet every morning on the riverbank. They sit in a nook of the ground and talk. Each morning, the second they see each other, they open easily, telling stories and dreams and secrets empty of any fear or suspicious holding back. To watch and listen to those two is to understand how, as it's written, sometimes when two beings come together, Christ becomes visible. The mouse starts laughing out a story he hasn't thought of in five years, and the telling might take five years. There's no blocking the speech flow, river running, all carrying momentum that true intimacy is. Bitterness doesn't have a chance with those two. And my low context self said, ah, thank you. Yeah, I'm going to see now. It's not just the breaking of the bread. It's the walking together on the road. It's the beginning of building a bridge of intimacy with Jesus, who they don't recognize, just a stranger walking with them, and opening themselves, sharing their story, and listening to his story, and then in the moment of the breaking of the bread, Christ is revealed in all three. Oh, thank you, high context self. That certainly does add a little bit more to that gospel lesson and will keep me from boring the log about Eucharist. Although you might need it. <laughs> <laughs> so, for me, this gospel lesson has this important message. It's faith not just faith in God, but faith in each other as well. When we share true faith, which is trust, which can only exist with intimacy, and we share those stories that may take, may take five years to tell, then that intimacy opens my eyes opens your eyes and we see Christ.